I, uh, the pastor, the pastor in Uganda, I would like to go with me, but I'm leaving it up to God, obviously, because I don't know the right way. So I'm like, God, do you want him to come? I don't want to invite him if it's not going to be beneficial, even though I would like to have someone to minister with. And I believe that he's the right person, but I'm just laying it before God of this trip that's coming up in a month. Uh, to go to England to preach the gospel. Amen. God has already begun to give me little glimpses and visions of, of where to preach. And one of my uh, really desires is there's a, there's, a, there's a church where John Newton rectored, and it's called St. Mary Woolnoth, and it's right in the financial district. So here's the financial district in England. And it is busy like Wall Street. Wow. And right in the middle of it is this ancient church. It is ancient. Wow. And th they wanted to tear it down, but they didn't tear it down. God preserved that church. And they undergirded it with steel, and there's a vault for the Bank of, of England. I went in the Bank of England to trade in some old money because it was going to expire. And, 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 I, and, I, and, I, and, and so this, the, the, the vault is, un, is, is almost under the church. So this church is just there, supported by God's hand, saying... This is you know, this is staying, and they're all built have built around it. So then there's this little mech, there's this little place across from the church. It's kind of like this little corner of the street. Cars are going, cars are going, but there's like this little peaceful, tr uh, tranquil park right there. I mean, you could the <laughs> church is there, and here's this place. And when I was there last time, you know, my instant thought was this is the place to to stand up and proclaim the gospel to England and tell them, look. You need to go back to your God. You know, God is beginning to stir words. You know, I want to say to them, look, I'm not here to preach against the Muslims. So it's good news. I'm here to preach against the Christians because it's you that have left God. Mm. And, 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 and so th therefore, that's <laughs> why these people are, have come in to take your wow. places. And, wow. and, and, and in Parliament, um, there, there, there is the, um, the uh, Muslims have set up near Parliament. They've taken over the park. Hmm. The park. And so they're playing this music and these prayers and they're just, wow. uh, I don't know a better word for it, but they're just bogarting in. Yeah. They're coming into the space that the Christians have, the seat that the Christians have left wow. uh, unoccupied. The Christians got up. They took their rest. They forgot that Christ was their security and they just got up and left that seat. So the Muslims said, thank you, and I'll take that seat. So they're sitting there now. So the best I can understand is that as I say to God, wow, I'm really afraid to do this, you know? I mean, this is like, wow, what's, mm -hmm. what? I feel the stirring to, to preach at this one place. And, and, and I want to just kind of imagining that it was probably when the church was there and John Newton was the pastor, he's buried under that church right now, or was, or he must have come outside. He must have prayed in those fields. So I'm right. like believing in my heart that maybe this is the, a place that God preserved, that he had prayed, that his tears had wet the... If not there, his tears certainly wet the, the, the ground of England. And it was a time when there was no... You know, the oppression was somewhere else. And there were just these men of faith that God was... that God that God had in these positions. And there was one of them. And it's still there. So I just felt a stirring, like stand there and proclaim. You know, when you look up, there's scriptures right in the middle of the district. So anyway, that's just one thing. But I went ahead and put a deposit down on a room in England. Um, and uh, because the pastor was saying, oh, the, 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 the embassy in, in, uh, in Uganda wants to know where we're going to stay. So that was my prompting because I've been toying, vacillating <coughs> with not, you know, not really securing a room of sort of playing it by ear. But then I felt God saying, go ahead and pay for the room, you know. And, and so I did. And then I told the pastor, here's the address. And he was grateful too. We have a home base. It's the same place that I stayed in last year where I prayed mm -hmm. and cried. Mm -hmm. It's the same place that the pastor, that I talked to the pastor when I was really weak. And, and he counseled me and said, go to Oxford Circle. Go here and go there and preach. And we talked about reuniting, you know, this year um, from that hotel that I secured this year. So I believe it was sort of a spiritual link in that. I'm looking for I'm looking for God in this thing so that I can be confident to go. And I know what's going to happen, but I want to walk with the cross. And I just want to be there at this time because it's such a pivotal time in England that, you know, we're... 
Now, wow, I wonder where I put my phone at. Um, is it under your book? The Bible? I need my Bible. There it is. Thank you very much. I'm going to take that. Thank you. Praise the Lord. So I'm praying for that upcoming, um, upcoming uh, trip and I'll, you know, and so this letter is the reference letter. So in the middle of the week, I'm going to go visit those boys, Lord willing, in, in Southston and preach with them and pray with them and, and, and just be with them. And this letter's for them. What are the dates of your trip? I'm um, leaving on the 30th, Lord willing, and then coming back on the, uh, not the, 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 the 9th, which I think is Monday. So it'll be 4th of July week to be in Hyde Park and to go to the financial district. The pastor, and so it looks, looks like he's going to come and meet me there. And so he is saying, uh, I found a lot of my ex, you know, co-pastors. I found a lot of these guys that have just sort of given up, you know, the, mm. the, the um, given up believing that God oh my. is um, is still sovereign and that God has a plan to deliver us. And God has allowed us to tonight's, messages about God has allowed us to be in this place. God allowed, but with his sovereignty, every obstacle, everything that's here is, 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 is like, it's the same as when Pharaoh was mm -hmm. chasing the people. It was the same. God is, has, in his sovereignty has allowed all of these obstacles mm -hmm. so that he could deliver us yes. against the impossible and that it wouldn't be on our own strength. We wouldn't even understand it. So he could get the glory. Yes. It's all for his glory. Yes. So this week, the, the thing about when you began to speak, I was almost crying there because I'm like, I was asking God after last week's sermon, Lord, what what bread, what, what, what will you give me? What message you know, will you give me? So as the week progressed, God gave me two messages. And, the, and tonight's message was, was about standing on the promises of God and not believing mm. your fears. And then when you began to read, you know, to talk about that it, 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 word for word, I'm like, thank you, Lord, that that was the confirmation of what God, what the heart of God wants us to know. And, 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 and here we, we will transfer that over into praying for the nations, praying for England, praying for everyone to know that it's not in our, it's not in our. So a father says to his child, there's no boogeyman under the bed, okay? And the child is like, but, but there's one. And, if, and, if, and the child's looking at, the father's looking at the dad going, look, I'm your dad. I love you. Believe me. My word is telling you it's enough for you to hold on to, to put your faith into rest. There's no boogeyman under your bed. You know, so a child, God's word is, is more than his word. His promises are more than his promises. It is his word that he's going to deliver us. And he wants us to put his faith in that. And, and God showed me this week that there must be opposition. Otherwise, he wouldn't be glorified. Mm -hmm. there, has to be op there has to be a pharaoh. There has to be Muslims coming in. Mm -hmm. There has to be Planned Parenthood. There doesn't have to be, but there is. There's these oppositions so that when God delivers us, he will get the glory. There's always been opposition in every generation of church folks. There's always been opposition. And God has allowed it for the express purpose to deliver his people in the situation and to get glory. So as God was showing me this week, I even went to sleep last night. I woke up this morning. I didn't have prayer time, but God was whispering in my heart all night. It's for my glory. Amen. And, 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 and when the church understands that, when people understand that every deliverance I give you and every deliverance you ask for is so that I can be, I can be, be glorified. And that that glory and, and that surrendering to God's sovereignty is actually the circumcision of our heart. It's the circumcision of our heart because the human heart doesn't want to surrender to that kind of um, lack of control. Um, deliver us from evil. Mm -hmm. Deliver us from evil is the prayer that Jesus taught us. And libero nos amalo mm -hmm. is the Latin. Libero nos amalo. Deliver us from evil. And that means, Lord, you have to deliver us. You have to deliver us. Now the, now the, now the psalm that you read tonight, Psalm 34, it, it, right? It's all of those promises that God's going to deliver us. But listen to how it opens. 
it opens with the glory of God. So I'm just keeping it open because I was going to go to Psalm 2 and say the same thing. All these Psalms that promise deliverance, the first thing they establish is why and, the, and that it's the glory of God. So look, Psalm 34, 1 says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. That's God's glory. He starts the psalm with it. Not the lie, not the fear, not the promise, but, no. the, but, the, but, the, but the glory he's establishing. No. Number two verse, my soul shall make her boast in the Lord and humble shall hear therefore and be glad. My soul shall make boast in the Lord when he delivers me after this thing that we're going to talk about uh, after this poor man cries, verse 6, the Lord encamps around his, 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 those who fear him, verse 7, but verse 2 says, my soul will make boast in the Lord. And so, and so the reason that the church is not being delivered yet is because we're still trying to do it on our own strength. Mm -hmm. We're still saying that we're still asking God to do the right thing even, but not for the right reason. And so, like Steve said, it was a key. And so, it is a key when we when we when we when we understand that 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 the deliverance that we're asking for is for the express uh, glory of God. Lord, glorify yourself by taking down these wicked judges. Lord, glorify yourself, and that and that's the way we pray to God. And 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 that 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 was, that was a spiritual circumcision for me this week because at first my flesh sort of even fought against that. Like, you know, I can't even tell you. But but there was something in my heart that needed to be circumcised when I kept saying, I was reading in William Gurnall about how God, our salvation, everything that God does for us is 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 is, is so God can get glory. And there's a you know there's a circumcision of the heart that has to happen. God has to cut away. And this week I said, cut it away. If there's anything that in, about that, that, that that I'm not comfortable with, I want you to cut it away. Because I want to be completely comfortable with that. Without thinking, why? What's your motive? Any of that. Like, what all these things? So I needed to be spiritually circumcised a little bit more. So, I, I mean, I believe in the sovereignty of God. But, look, the church needs to be spiritually circumcised. Though that that thing about God's glory and God being glorified in all that He does and delivering us, that is not by and large received by the church. They're, they're still judging God. They're still saying, well, that wouldn't be fair if God, you know, that yeah. wouldn't be fair if God did it this way. And it's like, as humans, we can't say that. We have to say, God, you can do whatever you want. If you get you glory, you can you can Put me in the hospital. I, I can lose my, 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 you know, you know. That's where we need to stand yeah. to be delivered. And that's where God needs to bring us. And, and in Haggai 2, it talks about the shaking. And yet a little while I will shake the heavens and the earth, the sea and the dry land. I'll shake, I'll shake, I'll shake everything, God says. And so the shaking's coming. And so God told me today, like, even the shaking, like, It'll bring people in that we're not even thinking are going to come in. You know, when, when you look at a tree, maybe there's five figs on it. that you say, I can judge that there's five good figs I'm going to eat. But if you shook that tree, probably 20 would come off. And you go, oh, look, there's some more figs. I didn't even know. So when God shakes this world and the church, hmm. people, the figs are going to come in. The harvest, people are going to come in and you didn't even think. But they're, they're sitting on the sideline right now. And they're judging. And they're, and they're making up their decision. But maybe they're afraid to say or come out with it but when the shaking happens the more figs are going to fall into the, the right basket than you think and more people and so that's to the glory of God that he's working right now that past our logic to think and see that you know oh well three of these people are going to come in where's the other people what about all these gay kids God, some, some per, somebody just posted something there's a lot going on right now a lot going on right now God is doing a lot and one of the things he's doing is he's pulling the mask, or he's pulling the the wicked. Every day God does things, and the the the, the, the unrighteous, the the lesbians, the gays, they had a covering in Obama. They had a covering, and, and uh, there was a little coven of them. When God broke that coven, you know they they, they lost their covering. We have a covering. 
It's Christ. They have no covering. Now they're coming out, and that Baker won, the Baker won, the Supreme Court said, you can, you constitutionally, you have the right to, uh, to bake a cake, or not to bake a cake. It's constitutional right. So, so now that you told me today that the lesbians and gays are going to march on his bakery, they're going to take matters into their own hands, they've left their covering, they've left their subtlety of a covering, and now the demonic uh, uh, hostility is going to come out. You know, and, you're, and, and, and that's an act of God. That's God taking their covering away so that everyone can see, and they can even see what they really are. That's happening in a, in, a, in a few, I saw that a couple of different times this week, where all of a sudden, the wicked are acting differently, right. because they've lost their covering. Right. So God took the cover away. We know he did, two, a year or two, we know he pulled that away. But now they're acting differently. Mm. And so, thank God, but the point is, there's a lot of people on the sideline watching, and those might be some of these figs that get shooken off into God's basket. We don't know, but it's to the glory of God. Yeah. Yeah. And so I said, so God gave me this message called resting on the promises. And because we began to talk about that here at Refuge, you know, and I'm like, God, but I don't really, where's my promises? Where, which ones can I rest on? Which ones can I say are for, are for me? And I know there's been ones over the years, but I didn't really gather them. So now I've gathered them. So I think that this is a good exercise that we, um, two things I want to say is, um, is that I, I believe that someday, if the Lord tarries, that these will be the times, I know, there's no, no you know, we're here, these will be the times when we say, men will say, that was the time when God turned back this, this, these people and, and, and began to move them in the right direction. People, we will look back on these times. No. We will look back on these times. Even if there's only five of us here, we'll look back on these times and say, that was the time. Some people are missing it and missing seeing what, you know, what God is doing right now. But, you know, I'm trying to empty myself and see, God, what, what is it? What is it? You know, and I'm just, you're just seeing little things. We're not going to know everything, but, 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 but resting on his promises. And so I've made my book. I've made my promise book um, of promises. And so I'm just, I'm just, I'm just gonna, as God gives me one, I'm gonna put it in this book. Um, there's a really good one for our purposes. The wicked are overthrown and are not, but the house of the righteous shall stand. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. The one that got me the most this week was about judges. And then I'll get back um, this was an interesting one that got that. For fear not, for I am with you, and will bring your offspring from the east, mm -hmm. and from the west I will gather you. Um, I liked that when I read it at first mm -hmm. because I thought about my son when God mm -hmm. brought him from Philadelphia. Amen. Yeah. It's like a literal, I'll bring your offspring from the east. Mm -hmm. and I, I received that into my heart. So what God showed me this week was they can be they can be words on a page, or we can actually believe our Father and say, "There's no boogeyman under the bed." This is what he's saying. We can take it to the bank. If Steve says, I'm going to be here at 730, we're all going to believe he's going to be here. And, and these are things that God has said, but yet we're not really. So what Gurnall said, and I won't get into it tonight, but this guy, uh, Gurnall, said that, that the promises of God are like flint and God's character is like the, 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 rock, the rock and our faith is like the dry stubble. stubble. And, the, and, and the rock and the flint have to strike. So these promises are not going to jump off the page and just ignite That's in our right. generation and change things. Right. We have to mm -hmm. believe them mm -hmm. and we have to walk in them and, and, and strike them and say to God, how can this how can we make fire here? How can this generation have fire? And it's 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 by it's by it's by believing them and by saying I'm believing this one like you did. So you did that this week. I mean, you struck a fire, and God and that fire was faith. So you struck a fire by saying, Yeah, I, I I'm getting the fear. I'm 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 hearing the you know what the world's telling me that there's mm -hmm. something wrong, but yet I'm going to go to God. 
and and I'm going to believe God more than I believe the mm -hmm. world. And that's what we have to do right now, Steve. Mm -hmm. That's what we mm -hmm. have to do right now because the world is so strong and abortion so strong and and this uh, you know this uh, homosexual agenda, but they're not. They're, God has weakened them already and and they're running. And so and so we just need to make a covenant with God and say I'm going to start keeping track of the promises and I'm going to start resting on them. And so one of them that God says about these judges, look at this one. Listen to this. Isaiah 126, and I and I will restore your judges as at the first and your counselors as at the beginning. Afterward, you shall be called the city of righteousness, mm -hmm. the faithful city, Isaiah 126. I will restore your judges that have been corrupted. Wow. So I grabbed that, and I'm like, this is wonderful. Yeah. And then I went to vote, and, and I didn't know which judge to vote for. But the, but the, voting, um, the voting was interesting because, uh, you know, uh, we... Um, I just reached out to some folks, you and a girl at my work, and you were helping me, and Philip was helping me, and like, who to vote for? You know, we, we wanted to vote for one person, Con, uh, uh, Travis, but then, you know, even my boss, Carolyn, said, you know, I would, if I voted my conscience, I would vote for this guy. We read it, read, it, read up on him, we liked him, but Cox has the endorsement from, uh, from Trump, so that's probably, the, you know, the right vote. But I voted for Travis anyway, but, but it was in my heart, you know, um, but it, it came down to the judges, and I don't know who to vote for because they weren't marked Republican and Democrat. Hmm. And so I had just read this like the day before, and then I'm there looking at the ballot like, I don't have a clue, God. I can't even guess. So I didn't even write anything in. So what it showed me about, I wasn't really prepared. So speaking about striking a rock to a to a flint and getting fire. I wasn't prepared. God had given me his promise, but I was there unprepared. So what did it teach me? That come November, I want to know who, which judges. I know we're talking about politics now, but I want to know which judges to vote for come November. So I'm not going to be caught unaware again. I believe this promise, but there's something about this promise that I have to do. God's not just going to do that. Mm -hmm. I can't just say, here you go, God, you do it. God says, no, you do it. It's my word. I told you I'm going to do this, but you need to do this. You need to take this to the bank. You need to, you need to believe this. You, this is your, come on. You, you, have some, you have some interest here. So the church has to ignite these, the church has to ignite these promises and walk, to, walk in them like you did and, and, and take the alternate route no. so that God will be glorified. Mm -hmm. So I made a binder. I made a binder, and, and, and I want, as God gives me these, I want to, you know, I, I just, I just want to uh, read them and believe them and say, mm -hmm. this, is the, this is the path. These, this is my Father's notes to me. Amen. Yeah. And not the yeah. world's fear, because right. I'm still going by the boogeyman. I'm, oh, the, well, the, the abortion is the boogeyman, you know, they're under mm -hmm. my bed, they're going to get me, they're going to win, they're bigger than we are, like that's a irrational fear. Mm -hmm. God doesn't say anything about that in the Bible. He says he's going to overthrow the wicked. So we must believe that he's going to overthrow the wicked. In our day, we must find scripture. So when we go to pray, right. we have to actually search. So now when I'm praying, I'm saying, Ah, oh, let me stop for a minute. God, give me a scripture that undergirds this prayer. I'm praying right now for something, but give me a scripture. What's the scripture? And as I asked God for those scriptures this week, he gave me scriptures Amen. to undergird my prayer. And so it was a scripture to undergird my prayer. The church is not really operating in, 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 in that mode. And I, I, I feel like that's why that there's not a lot of fire right now. Because it's theoretical, it's words on a page, they're nice. But, they're, but the fear is actually still dominating mm -hmm. us as believers. Mm -hmm. And so everything you said, we could have stopped right there. You said the whole teaching tonight. Everything, what you said was a microcosm of, of everything that God was, 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 sh was showing me this, this week. Except that God really made a point to bring me up and say, look, it's the glory. It's the glory. You know, that, that's the part of it that, like I said, and God has been showing us that, me that, incrementally throughout the last few sermons. You know, in the, in the Lord's Prayer in John 17, it was like, yes, for the glory of God. And now this week it went into the promises to say, 
God wants us to believe his promises because number one, it's his word. Number two, it's his character on the line. Should we not trust his word no. over our fears? And number three, it's his glory on the line. So God has allowed us to come to this place to see if we will stand on his promises or we'll just not believe him and, and a generation. And so back to the scripture that says, deliver us from evil. It's very simple. God just wants us to to extol his name and to... Amen. So there's this, I'm going to try to get a song from the pastor's wife and it's called, How Excellent Is Your Name? And all day yesterday, it was just in my heart. And so at the risk of looking foolish, it goes, How excellent is your name? How excellent is your name? How excellent is your name? Oh God, how excellent is your name? How excellent is your name? How excellent is your name, oh God. Mm. And when I go to Africa, the, the wife sings this, and, and, and I just cry. Mm. And they are crying, and there's tears flowing, and they're just, they're just extolling God. Mm. And, that's where, and, that's, and that's where God wants us. Yeah. It's just that simple. Mm. Yes. And so as we continue to pray... And to and to fight on, you know. Look for look for your. I was giving this out of work. I'm walking around my office, going, "Look at this one. Look at this one. Look at this one. Look at it. He is a shield. <clears throat> Every word of God proves true. He is a he is. So there's certain key words that you can just say. I'm taking the he is. Amen. Okay. He is a shield. He is. I'm, I got that. I got I'm, that's in my that's in me now, and it will build a fire. And as you walk in it, so it, you're striking, you're trusting God, you're striking the, you're striking the rock against the flint, and your and and the faith that God gives you will create the fire, that 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 warms you and that you walk in, and that's how we begin to take the field, and and and, and as we say to God, this is you, this is your word, mm -hmm. this is the faith you gave me, and this and and and, and this is your character on the line, mm -hmm. and, and so I and so. It must be God to deliver us from Planned Parenthood, from this agenda, from, from, from all of these things, from the Muslims in Europe. I believe it. I just have to find scriptures that tell me, you know, walk in this, stand here, and let me deliver you on this scripture, on my word. Other generations of Christians have taken his word in a different way than we take it now. It can literally be <coughs> words on a page. Or it can jump off the page and be your father's love letter to say, Amen. there's no boogeyman. Amen. Believe me. Look at my eyes. Look. It, this is what it says. So I only have a few scriptures. But, you know, I mean, I, the minute I asked God, I want some scriptures. He began to give me a couple. And um, this, I restore your judges, popped right up. And it was like, thank you, God, because we want to believe that God is going to restore our judges for his glory Amen. here in California. Yes, and the Lord. fact that 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 a Republican uh, the the fact that the Republicans got on the ballot, mm -hmm. my boss, who's a wise woman, didn't even think that was going to happen. She said the fix is in. So God's fix was in. God fixed it and God put a Republican on the ballot. God also gave us time to know who the judges are going to be. So that was just a little quick little tester thing to show us that we're not prepared to really believe God here. And so let's get prepared. Let's um let let's figure out who you know who the who, who the judges are. Let's be more prepared on the next ballot. I took that to heart, and so did the lady at work. And uh, you know, because God says He's going to do this. Amen. And. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. I want to believe his word. Amen. 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 There was another one in here. He talked about gray hair. I should find that one. But the wicked are overthrown and are, and are not, but the house of the righteous shall stand. So the wicked are overthrown. So I, don't, I have it here, but anyway, not to elongate anything, but I did take a picture of Babies or Us, Toys or Us, and down, down here when I went in to get my uh, lunch meat, um, their sign is down, and that building is, that building is, mm -hmm. wait a minute, it's no more. Right. When I first got saved, there was a wicked guy, and he lived in this house, 
And Jesus is saving me. And I'm 17. I'm walking around. I got nothing but this Proverbs in my head, right? And so I'm like walking around. And there's a scripture that says, the righteous will be established, but the wicked are no more. And I walk by this house. And of all the houses on the street, that one was down to the, where is the house? Somebody demoed it, and it was down to the dirt. So I'm looking at it. It looked like a tooth, like it's missing. <laughs> Every, and, and there's one, and there's a house, and the house that was wicked, huh. that that. I was a very spiritual guy who led a lot of us young people. It was a time where God was sort of, God was talking to me and leading me in a spiritual way. So here was this older man and he was hanging with young people, giving them drugs, kind of acting like he was spiritual. I had a picture, said there was a demon that lived in the picture. Oh so he was just like, he was here. And we, and we would sit on the porch and he would cry, but he seemed like a gay guy, but he was talking about God. So he was a wicked man. And he was leading people in wicked ways. God delivered me anyway. And when I walked by the house, the only scripture I could read in Proverbs was like, you, their, their house will be gone and you'll see them no more. And I was like, wow, God, that was a literal verse. That really happened. This, this guy's gone and even the house is, is down to ashes, the one house on the block 40 years ago. And so, and so we, it's, it's a conscious effort to light a fire. You, can't, you can walk around with a stone. You can have a flint in this pocket. You can be out in the woods. But you have to actually strike. You, have, you know, it's hard to light a fire. But God says, yeah, yeah. G get to it. Like, light this fire. Find you a verse that you really believe in and just, and just, and just challenge me. Test me. See that the Lord is good. At the top of this page that you read, this psalm, look, it says, um, my Bible on Psalm 34 says, oh, taste and see. I was just looking at that as you were reading. It's just a commentary on my Bible at the top. It says, oh, taste and see. And so God is telling us, you know, I'm going to deliver you. Stop, you know, stop with the fears and, and, and just, and just get in my, get in my, get in my word. And so tonight I want to pray those some of these. This is my going to be my prayer book. I'm going to pray these. Mm -hmm. Verse 3, O magnify the Lord with me and let us extol his name together. Verse 3 of the psalm. That I wasn't even going to read this psalm. I had another one. I, I sought the Lord and he heard me and it delivered me from my fears. Everything you said tonight was was just, just like was 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 how God wants to deliver us in every way across the board. Your, you know, in, in your in, in your situation this week, in our in our country, in, in in our nation, in our church, in our generation, it's the same God delivering the same way each time for His own for His own for His own glory. But He's not going to let us do it in our own strength. And so we just need to get to that place where we're like, okay, it's your it's your it's your word over my my thinking that this can't be done and I'm gonna I'm gonna, now it's time to throw our whole weight into this word it is time to throw our whole weight into this word and say okay God what else what else is where else can I stand what else is in here I'm ignorant I don't know show me I'm ignorant I didn't have one verse this week now I got ten and so I'm ignorant God show me show me more of these things that I can really believe you know and, and and live and walk in and say look you said you're going to do it Amen. Amen. Uh, psalm while we're here is psalm 8 i went to the franklin graham i chased them around i prayed um i left i left uh honestly i left be at the very end because um it, it was good. He talked po politics, and then he talked about adult uh, uh, abortion. And if anyone's in the crowd has had this thing, you can be God can forgive you, you know. But he, I was like, God, I got to get out of here because I know how he's going to finish this thing, and I know it's going to grieve me, and I don't want to be grieved tonight. So I just ran away before I was praying with him. I was happy to pray with him, but I. Every time I go, I'm like, I gotta get out of here before the end, before he, before he delivers people for them and doesn't let God deliver them, before he, before he quick gives them that quick religion thing that's learned in our day, and 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 you know to say, here it is, here's the law, here's your sins, God has forgiven you, and so go in peace, you're delivered, 
and that's it. I, I, I just like, you know, God never said to do that. God said preach and leave people with me. And then get out of the room. And it's going to be me and them of the Holy Spirit and that person. Mm -hmm. If I need you to come in as a midwife, I'll call for you. But God, God will leave them with me. And that's the difference between evangelism of our day and evangelism now. Back, back when the great evangelists had preached, they preached, preach, preach, preach. Ravenhill said we didn't hardly ever do calls. We just let the fire and conviction build in those people because there's more. And so even the songs came on, to be honest with you. Then the songs came on and it was like, wow, excuse me for being so honest, but it was like Christian cocaine. It was just like, I'll take this real quick. Sorry if I'm, you know, but it was just like, take this because God's going to deliver us and everything's going to be good because the Bible says it is. Oh, it's time to go. Let's go. And it was like, this was going well. Then when I left, I couldn't get a taxi cab, and I felt like God was saying, go back in there and ask me to do something. But I ran away because I was grieved. But I wanted, I wanted to pray that God's Spirit would fall and people would really be convicted mm -hmm. and fall on the ground mm -hmm. with no answer, right. with no Band-Aid. Right. Just, look, there's tomorrow. Right. Get on the ground all night. Right. Deal with your sin. Deal with the... The, the deal with the thing that you're doing. Not just quick, it's over, boom, happy, let's go. And then you didn't really deal with it. You missed the opportunity to be born again. You got, you just got decisional. So anyway, I was grieved and I left. And then I believe God said, you should have stayed, you should have stayed. And as they were doing that, you should have been like, God, no, let's have conviction. Let's fall upon this crowd. You know, let them fall with no answer. We don't supposed to have an answer. We're supposed to say, deliver us from evil. Mm -hmm. Not like, okay, great, now here's the deliverance prayer. <laughs> say this and we're out of here. Right. What are you doing? Right. So I'm not coming down on him. I, you know, I love what he did, but I was honestly, you know, that was where I was at when I went up there. And, uh, and I, you know, and, and so it just brought me back to the problem of, the, you know, what's wrong with Christianity in our day? What are we doing? We're just not waiting for God to actually deliver us. We're coming up with this con uh, con con constructed deliverance, and we're just giving people the quick, easy bake oven bowl. The bowl gets a little warm, and we're like, come back, let's get you to answer real quick, and now you're blessed and you're forgiven, and go on, mm -hmm. out of here. Mm -hmm. The bowl didn't even get hot. You know, there were people in the old days that wept for days and cried, and Spurgeon walked in the snow, and he was, he was and Luther was like, Oh, God is my enemy because God is your enemy because you're out, you know, you're outside. So back to the prayer meeting, there must be a contrast for God to deliver. Right. Planned Parenthood, wicked judges, Muslims in England. These things have the stage has to be set. Pharaoh coming at the children of Israel. There has to be opposition. There has to be contrasting opposition for God to get glory in his deliverance. And that's why it's wrong for man to deliver and to give people the easy way out. Because God said, I want to deliver. If you want to deliver, it's not, it's not happening. It hasn't happened. Right. You're all, you know, I get it. Yeah. You guys are so close, but you're not letting me come in and finish. Mm -hmm. You're not letting me, you're not going, and, and now I want you to talk to God about your sins because I don't know your heart and I don't know where you're at and I don't know how messed up you are and I'm not going to tell you to say a two-minute sinner prayer and we're done here. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to do that. True. And so God, you know, that. and so listen, and then, and then Shelly's emailing me and saying, hey, I'm, I hope I have this kid. I'm like, wait a minute. If it takes nine months to have a baby and you're, and you're like, I got to deliver. That Sunday's sermon is, they, they, it's all run together now. <clears throat> Sunday's sermon is holy desperation. Holy desperation. And, and, and if a wife, if a woman is so desperate to give birth, then she gives birth. And she's, you know, she forgets the pain. 
but it was nine months, and then it was all that time. And how can the church believe that they can do it in 20 minutes? Mm -hmm. When it takes, a, when even God is showing us with physical labor, it is a distraught situation. It's not an easy delivery. It's not like, oh, I went to the hospital. Yeah, I had a steak. I had a baby. His, his name is Philip, and yeah, we're all done. Like I said, this thing. And, <laughs> wow, it sounds like that was easy. Well, maybe I'll do it. Maybe I'll have a baby. <laughs> It can't be that easy, and so we've we've delivered ourselves for God in so many ways, and we're not we're not, and, and God can't get glory out of that. God says I can't get glory out of it if Franklin Graham delivers the crowd. I'm not delivering them. I'm not in that. I'm not I'm not following him around through California and and blessing the sinner's prayer and going that's good enough for now. That'll hold them till I can get to them. God, you know, the preaching needs to be desperate. And, yeah. and the deliverance right. needs to be desperate. <clears throat> right. And you need to leave men there, even if they're walking in the field like crazy people all night long. Leave them alone with God. Don't you trust God to save that person? The Bible says if you cry out to me with all your heart, I'll, I'll find yes. you. And so that's how we want to leave people. Yes. And that's how we want to be. And that's how the church needs to be. And that's the desperate cry that God will answer. God will answer desperate cries. And desperate, like, God, I'm on your word. But you see the wicked are all around us. Pharaoh's here and like, but I'm on your word. And God says, I, I, I got this. I got this. Let me get this. I got this. Because God, his glory is way more important than this generation Amen. understands. Yeah. That's right. But other Christians understood it. And the Bible's full of it. Moses was full of all about God's glory. When you read the old prophets, it was all about God's glory. Amen. And now it's about, some girl said as I was coming here, oh, you need to declare, walk in spiritual authority, walk in that job and say, mm -hmm. in the name of Jesus. And like, yeah, okay, I hear what you're saying. But if you take all that, where's God getting glory in that? Mm -hmm. Ryan could get some glory. Mm -hmm. Where's God going to get glory in that, in that right. theology? Right, right, that's right. That's right. Where, where we could just go down and, and, and in the ashes and... and, and God wants us to be in the ashes and he wants to be lifted up yeah. so that when he delivers us, it'll be, it'll be fabulous. God can do it and God will do it. And there's no, the only hesitation is where we need to be circumcised. That's the part where we don't believe God. Mm -hmm. That little thing in us that says, yeah, but what about this? And what about that? And like, yeah, you know, the fact that we're not standing mm -hmm. on his word and, and throwing our whole life investment into it shows that we have a, we're not, we're not be really believing it, you know. And if we would just believe God. And so Amen. God's going to do it anyway. God's going to do it for his glory. Amen. He just wants us to get on, Amen. on that same page with him. That's right. And so I'm learning about this glory thing. And I don't think God's done teaching me, but I've stumbled upon it. I didn't stumble upon it. He led me into it. Steve, you're talking about it. And it's, 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 it's just, it's just huge mm -hmm. that we should just be delivered. And when the children of Israel were delivered, they just began to sing. They just began to bless God and sing. There's nothing left to do. You didn't do this. You didn't do this. Right. This had nothing to do with you. That's right. This had to do with your God delivering you. Amen. That's right. And so I, I, this week, it, it just became obvious that the contrast has to be there. And people say, well, why am I, why is my car breaking down? Why am I sick? Why, why, are they, why are these things going on? Why can't it be easy? But because then God wouldn't be glorified in the deliverance over those things. God has to make a wall that we can't climb over mm -hmm. so that he can deliver us and say, there's nothing left to do but to praise, to praise my name. I am the deliverer. I gave you salvation. I delivered you from sin. Mm -hmm. I'll deliver you. I'll deliver your nation. I'll deliver. I'm a deliverer. I've come to deliver. But you have to believe me. And, and, and the problem is not with God. We can't blame God for not delivering this country. Mm -hmm. The problem with, is with us not really putting our heart into his word saying that God will do it. We don't, That's right. there's a disbelief and, and that disbelief is based in the carnal heart that needs to be circumcised to just say God is sovereign and God does deserve this glory to deliver us. We cannot do it. Right. Deliver us from evil. That's the prayer, the yes. Lord's prayer. Amen. That's right. Psalm number eight. <clears throat> O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth, who has set thy glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings thou hast ordained strength because of thine enemies, and thou might, might still the enemy and the avenger. 
when I consider the heavens and the... Well, that's it. So just those ter- first two verses of, of, of Psalm 8, 1 and 2 is, O oh Lord, our God, how excellent is your name in all the earth. So all the, all the spiritual authority, everything that we're walking in, but dust needs to go away. And we just need to extol God's name, give him glory, and, 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 and wait on him to... Yes. Wait on... Amen. Take his word to the bank... You know, you can have a note. Somebody can give you a check, and it could be a lot of money. You can just put it in your pocket. Or you can take that check to the bank, and you can say, hey, I want to buy a house. I want to deposit this money. So God has given us God has given us a check, but we've kind of done like this. Yeah, I got it. I'll, you know. and God's like, no, take that out right, right now. Use, <clears throat> use, use this right now. Buy your house. Build your house. And then the other thing God said to me in the spirit was, you know, I'm 57. He said, find a place. Funny, because you said it when you fell. God put you in that place. Find a place that you can put your back against. And just start grinding out the mill. Grinding out the, uh, grinding the, grinding the grain. For 20 years. Like, that's what I'm asking. I'm like, God, give me a place that I can just, I can just solidly believe your word and start grinding out the grain for you. Because that's what Spurgeon did. He found a place for 40 years and he, he just progressively believed the promises of God. He brought them to God, and then he, and then, and then they, and then they walked them out, and they began to walk in them, and then God began to do the things that they mm-hmm. that they were asking. So grinding the grain to me is just like sit down, find a place that you're not going to be moved, and and grind out, you know, and and produce, produce belief, produce belief. Mm-hmm. God, we want that. We want. We want. <coughs> We want to stay with you. This is not our prayers leading the way. Mm-hmm. Like God, we're not telling God what to do. Mm-hmm. You know, He's He's leading the way, and we're just believing and grinding it out and walking into reality. We are seeing God move. We are seeing realities change. It's not our prayers. Mm. There's no glory in it for us. That you that 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 won't be said in a lot of churches. They're still got that formula thing. But God is saying, I'm gonna you know. God's going to do it. I'm not up here hopeful wishing. I'm saying God's doing it. We're seeing God do Amen. it. And God has done huge things in the past for other generations mm-hmm. who, who just said, yes, I'm going, to, I'm going to take that and I'm going to deposit that and I'm going to live those verses and I'm going to, I'm going to believe that God is going to restore our judges. And someone might say, yeah, but that was for Isaiah 1. That wasn't for us. Mm-hmm. But it is, I, be- mm-hmm. I don't believe that. I believe that you can take a, a, a Bible verse and say, I'm standing on that. Amen. And, and it, oh, oh, somebody, some, somebody in a Baptist or somewhere might say, that was, you're out of content. But that's just the devil, you know, trying mm-hmm. to trick you. And you can rest on a promise. If, it, if the Holy Spirit speaks to you in the mm-hmm. Bible and a promise speaks to you, I believe that it's God saying, that's for you, mm-hmm. you know. There's one in here that says, like, every time I read it, I'm like, that's for me. God says, um... I'll be with you. Even when you're old. Mm-hmm. There's literally one for like everything you can think of. There's one if you get mad at somebody that says, uh, vengeance is mine. I'll repay, says the Lord. Oh, vengeance is yours. Right. Okay. I love this one. Sin will not have, shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under law, but under grace. Sin won't have dominion under me. Why? Because God said it won't. Well, that's great. I'm going to hug on to that one because sin has had dominion over me. I can't walk in victory, but God has given me the victory. Glory to God. Absolutely, 100%, unequivocally, it was Him. Because I can't walk in victory. He's proved to me already that I can't do it. But, 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 but He said... Sin shall not have dominion over you. No. Which one? And even to your old age, I am clean. Yeah. And even to your four hairs, I will carry you. I have made, and I will bear, even I will carry and you. That one speaks to me that God didn't never forgot me, and He's going to keep me. He's going to bring me right to the end. I love that verse. I do believe that verse more than I believe in anything else in my life. That fact, you know, retirement, anything I can possibly do, I'm clinging on to that. So we're Amen. we're losing grip over here, and we're. So this is a little story. 
So, you know, this week they began to do the work in Africa. So they went in and they started digging the field that we talked about. The field had grown over the place that I saw years ago um, where the children would come down and get this muddy water. And at the time, it was breaking my heart. But now there's no water. And we're like, well, the muddy water was better than no water. It was a little marsh. So this year, the pastor said, the marsh, has, has, all the bush has taken over. So the water can't come anymore. And so the kids are showing up with cans and they're walking away. Like, mm. I, they've come far. They come with, and, they, get, and they, they take these yellow diesel buckets and they just fill it up with muddy water. And... Um, mm. And they put it on their head, little, little skinny kids. Mm -hmm. And they walk miles to bring it home to their mom so they can boil some cabbage or whatever they have. It's a daily thing to go to, go find some water somewhere. So they have these mm -hmm. places that they go to. And this was one of them. And I saw those kids there, beautiful little kids, mm -hmm. smiling, give them a little piece of candy. And they're just so happy. But they're, they're working hard, you know. And, uh, and so... Um, the community came together, Pastor Edward, they decided they're going to dig out the bushes. And uh, the first night they dug out the bushes, the rains came. And there's a video of him just laughing because the, they took the first step and God sent all this rain. And the next day those children were back and they were getting the water. And then the second day they were dealing with the rain again. And then by the third day, they, there's like a lake there now, a, you know, a little lake. So I was talking to the pastor and I said, um, you know, God put it on my heart a long time ago that we should design this thing like on a slope and, you know, put like a concrete V at the top of it so that the water can spill over from the marsh and fill that V and then have a walkway up the side and they can go up there and fill up their buckets clean and, and then let, let the water run down and then put like a little dirt pond at the bottom where the animals that naturally come there to drink, they could drink from there so that the clean water is at the top and the... The, the, the problem before was that it was all